Oklahoma's nursing board keeps all of their records very public. There's a, you can just go on their website and you can look up license information and it'll also provide you with any disciplinary action taken against nurses, which is really mm -hmm. nice. And when I last looked her up, it still showed that she no longer had her license. She actually is still practicing, has been practicing all this time under a different name. This is Medspa Mayhem, the podcast all about the chaotic world of medical aesthetics. From Botox to lasers to IV bars, learn how to tell real versus fake, legal versus illegal, and safe versus potentially deadly. Hear the crazy stories inside the med spa world and find out what questions to ask and how to spot the people cutting corners. I'm your host, Dr. Kate D. Together, we explore the wild west of medicine that is the aesthetics industry. Today, you're going to hear about two people who've broken the laws that we've been talking about, and they actually got caught and indicted. I hope it's become clear that if you've been following the podcast, that getting caught is actually very unusual. Very few of these perpetrators ever get prosecuted, and as we'll see, one of them is still out there practicing medicine without a license. I hope you find this interview interesting. I'm speaking with the reporter who just broke these stories. Hi, this is Dr. Kate D, and I am talking today with Jazz Wolf. Jazz is a journalist who works for The Frontier, which is a newspaper based in Oklahoma. And she recently wrote a really excellent article about some of the uh, legal cases going on in Oklahoma. And I thought it was so interesting. I asked her on, and I'm so happy that she was able to free up some time to talk to me today. So Jazz, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Yeah. The article just came out a few days ago. And it talks about two main cases that happen in Oklahoma. The first one I had heard about before, it was this nurse who, her name was Kay Sanders. She's 62. She's from Tulsa. And she owned and ran a medical spa in Oklahoma called Lakayam. And can you tell a little bit about what was going on there and what the case was all about? Yeah, Absolutely. Kay Sanders, or Lisa Sanders, she went by a couple different names. She ran this medical spa and had multiple suits against her, specifically against her, for just mistreatment. Each case varied. The oldest case that I found was a man complaining about her improperly doing tattoo removal procedures. And then later cases were just her doing improper traditional medical spa procedures, Botox injections, things like that, which according to the suits, led to a lot of very serious complications for these patients, including and permanent scarring, permanent pain, things like that. Okay. And was she an RN or was she a nurse practitioner? I know she had a license from the nursing board of some kind. I believe she was a registered nurse. She was an a RN. A registered nurse. Okay. Um, and she was practicing on her own with no medical director? From what it looks like, yes, there was a situation where one doctor, whose name I can't remember at the moment, she claimed that he was her supervisor, but there wasn't a lot of evidence to support that. So essentially, she was practicing on her own. And as we've covered on the podcast before, RNs can be excellent injectors, but they don't have the ability to practice on their own. They can't practice medicine. They can't prescribe Botox, for instance, or a laser treatment. They could carry that out under a doctor's orders. So it sounds like she was practicing out of the scope of her license. Yeah. So I, say I, I got in touch with her attorney for the federal case that she was indicted on, and he claims that none of that is true and that she was work practicing within her scope, but she was still found okay. guilty. Interesting. So what you wrote about was that besides not having medical supervision, she was purchasing and injecting illegal products. Can you say what was going on there? Where was she getting them? What were the illegal products that she was using? Yeah, she was obtaining, among other things, Botox from Canada, which is not permissible. You're supposed to be obtaining these things directly from manufacturers. That is FDA rules. And she was not doing that. She was obtaining it from, I think, a pharmacy in Canada. And that led to 
issues of her things like Botox being mislabeled because they were mislabeled under like Canadian measurements, basically, which was considered to be an issue and just made it so that people were very concerned about like patient safety. Yeah. And so for our audience, the issue in using illegally imported product, even if it's real Botox. So Botox is much cheaper in Canada. I actually talked to a med spa owner in Vancouver who had a partner in LA and they opened up a clinic in LA and they're and this woman was so horrified and shocked at how expensive it is in the United States compared to Canada. And that's true. But it is not legal to buy it in Canada and import it into the U.S. And there actually are a number of companies that do that, either from Canada or Europe or some other foreign countries. And the issues with that is that you don't know how it's shipped. So the, the Botox has to be shipped on dry ice. It has to be kept really cold or it essentially goes bad, it'll break down, so it won't be effective. So when something's illegally imported, you don't know how it's shipped. It could be in a hot container or whatever. And then all of the expiration dates that might be like much sooner because, or it might be expired because you've just now shipped it over a long distance. And then also, if there's anything wrong with the lot number or whatever, the company that makes it, Allergan, will not help you. So they, they can't say, oh gosh, you had some issue, we'll replace it for you. They'll be like, where'd you get that? Because you illegally imported it. There are a lot of issues with that. So if it's actual real Botox, but comes from a foreign country, it still doesn't mean that it's okay or that it's just as good as Botox that you got here. And I had think I had read she had also been injecting filler that was illegally imported. Yeah, I can't remember the name off my head. I think sort of like an L or something like that. But that was also being transported from Canada to yeah. our clinic. And the filler is also pretty problematic because they have different fillers in other countries that we don't have here. So a lot of those can be not FDA approved because they're like a different version of it, different fillers or different manufacturers. So what happened to her? So she, so a lot of patients had complained and I guess there was more than one lawsuit, but the one that got her indicted was the illegal importation thing. That was a federal indictment for illegally transporting and utilizing drugs on her patients without informing them properly. There was a few other counts within that indictment for like mail fraud and things like that. But she those were those ended up being dismissed. But she was found guilty for using and purchasing illegal drugs. The indictment happened in 2020. I saw that some of the lawsuits were, at least one of them was dismissed in 21, and I couldn't figure out whether it was just settled or whatever. But the result of that was that she lost her nursing license. And as far as I could tell, she was not eligible to reapply for a license for three years, right? I don't know the exact timing, but that three-year time frame would be right around now. So is there any evidence that she has a license now? Did she reapply or do we, can we find that? Not that I've found. Oklahoma's nursing board keeps all of their records very public. There's a, you can just go on their website and you can look up license information and it'll also provide you with any disciplinary action taken against nurses, which is really nice. And when I last looked her up about probably a month ago at this point, it still showed that she no longer had her license. Okay. And she actually is still practicing, has been practicing all this time under a different name. And I was told that was anointed. But if you go to the anointed med spa website, there's no mention of her on it at all. I think there used to be, but they deleted that. I'm wondering whether they deleted that in response to your digging around for your article. Do you have any idea? Did you see it on there before? I have no clue. I did not see it on there when I first uh, looked at it, but I had already started uh, putting feelers out before I looked at the website. So Mm -hmm. it's possible. Um, Yeah. You can tell that it's hers because if you look at Google reviews, they, a lot of the reviews mention her by name. So, so I think what happened was she lost her license, shut down the old spa, opened up a new one and now scrubbed her name from it, but she's still owning it, operating it. And she doesn't have any license at all. What I've heard from other the people is that they have complained to the nursing board. And the nursing board's response was, what can we do? We already took away her license. So I don't know. I think that to me, this is a real lesson 
for our audience that even after a federal indictment and multiple lawsuits and your license being taken away, there are still people out there practicing illegally. She was practicing illegally before, so she lost the, her RN license, but she's still practicing illegally. So I really, I cannot stress this enough for our audience. I know I keep saying this, but always look up someone's license or when you're about to see them, look them up. It's actually really easy to look them up and you can tell whether somebody has a license or not, whether a doctor or a nurse or a PA. So that's like the number one thing. And then the second question is, do you have a medical director and who is that? And then look that person up. And then just ask to see the medical director because if the medical director is doing their job, they're there sometimes. That medical director doesn't have to be there all the time, but they're supposed to be there managing it, managing all the people who are working under their license. And they should be at least available in some way to respond if there's ever a need. So is there anything about that case that you want to share? One thing that I found very interesting is if you go through uh, the documents of the case, and when I had an email exchange with her attorney for this case as well, he explained this. Her team's defense was that, yes, she did purchase Botox and Blue Dream from Canada, <laughs> but this is because allergen makes prices too expensive in the United States. Yeah, so she allergy, was simply trying allergy. to save money. And he claimed that Allergen utilized the FDA as Botox police, is the phrasing he used. Um, that's a really, it's a really interesting question, right? There are a lot of medications. I would say most medications are less expensive in Europe and less expensive in Canada. I know many years ago when I went through IVF to try to get pregnant, the advice to me back then, and this is 20 years ago, was to purchase the fertility meds from an online company that I think imported it from Europe. And it was a tiny fraction of the cost of getting them here in America. And I think at that time, it was very early on in our experience with the internet, because this was a really long time ago. And, and I don't think that people realize that's illegal. And there are a couple companies, I get emails all the time and ads in my personal Facebook feed for these companies that are they say FDA approved, they say legal in the United States, and they're totally illegal, they're importing it, but they don't, they obviously don't tell you that. And if you're very new in the industry, you might not know. But this woman, she had been practicing in the industry, I think for 12 years before this ever happened. And so she knew, like, I can imagine in the first year of your first setting up shop, you don't realize, oh, this is not okay. For everybody listening too, you can order almost anything off the internet including completely fake stuff off of not just Amazon, but Alibaba, which is China's version of Amazon. And all these places are busy, like taking a vial of something cheap and putting a new label on it and selling it as Botox or Ozempic or any of these really popular drugs here in the States. Super dangerous. It's really bad. I've had someone ask me recently, another reporter asked me, is it possible that someone does this and they just don't know they're doing something illegal? And, and I would say that in the, I can imagine that could happen. I do think that the vast majority of people who are doing it, they know they're doing something illegal. They know that they're just like, oh, I can't pay $700 a vial for Botox. I'm going to find it cheaper. That I think it is true that it is much cheaper in Canada. And we could go there and get the Botox, but that wouldn't. You could drive there and go see a practitioner in Canada and probably pay less money than we pay here, for sure. But but you can't import it. And that's true of every single drug. It's not just Botox. It's not just Allergan using the FDA as, a, as police. This is true for every drug on the planet. And there are cheap versions of Botox. There's a Korean version. There's a few, there's one Chinese version. Those are not FDA approved here in the States. They would have to be shown to be safe. And the companies that make them don't want to jump through all those hoops to try to get FDA approval in the United States. So they don't. But there are there can easily be unscrupulous people in, in Asia saying, let me package this up, slap a fake label on it, and sell it as Botox. That I think that's the origin of all the botulism cases that we've seen over the last few months from fake Botox. They're taking some foreign neurotoxin or something that's clearly too concentrated and has way more than the normal amount in it. I think that's why we've seen the botulism. 
I would anything else about that case because I think that that the second case is really interesting, and I know a lot less about the second case that you talked about in your article. Should we move on to that? Yeah, definitely. Sounds good. Okay. Do you want to describe what the second case was? It was, it was in Oklahoma City, and it was about a doctor who ran a med spa called Pure Derma Med Spa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In that case with Dr. Darter, she, there were quite a few complaints and by quite a few, about 70 sent to the Oklahoma Medical Board in one month at one point because at her dermatology clinic, she was not able to provide patient information. (laughs) And this was not the first time that that had been an issue with her. There had previously been a variety of complaints to her regarding her practice. So I'm just pulling up my note because it's been a second. <laughs> but there there were quite a few issues with her. And because of that particular period of 70 complaints in one month, she did end up having her license suspended, I believe. So the part that I read in your article was that there was a patient complaint from the med spa, separate from the dermatology office, where she received IPL and Morpheus, which is an RF microneedling device from an esthetician. And the esthetician, I think, did it on her own without any supervision. It's, I don't know whether the patient ever even saw Dr. Darter. Yes. If I'm remembering correctly, the patient eventually saw Dr. Darter after returning to the clinic. But Dr. Darter didn't prescribe these things. No. Yeah. And I think that's a really important thing too is if you're going to have something, they have to have been prescribed by a doctor or somebody who's qualified to prescribe something. And an esthetician is not even a nurse. They can't prescribe anything, okay? So you can't go see an esthetician and have them prescribe a medical treatment to you and actually do it to you. That's completely illegal. But it sounds like that's what was happening. It sounds like the esthetician was providing medical services without even any input from the doctor, much less a prescription from the doctor. And so this particular patient had a really bad outcome. So she got all these burns and then went and the S was trying to manage it herself. And then at one point you described scraping the blistered burns away. And that sounded really scary to me. I don't know how, what the outcome was, whether the patient was scarred from all that, that would be really common to get scarring or hyper or hypopigmentation from that. Yeah. It, throughout the case, she describes issues with scarring and such stuff like that. Yeah. When I spoke with her attorneys regarding that issue, they could not share why the case was dismissed, but they did say that the client, their their client, the patient, was happy with how everything turned out. It's possible that it was maybe settled outside of court. So we don't really know what happened with that lawsuit. But meanwhile, Dr. Dard, her license was suspended. Is that still suspended? Did she lose it completely or was it just suspended temporarily? Is she back in practice? Do you know? As far as I know... <laughs> I don't know if it was a permanent suspension, but I know it was suspended. And last I checked, she was not practicing again. Okay. Other thing that you wrote in your article was that the cosmetology board that licensed the esthetician hasn't done anything about that, about sanctioning the esthetician or anything like that. From Um, what I can tell, no. Um, The cosmetology board is not as transparent as like the nursing board is regarding their licensing. Okay. Um, they have a page that shows what licenses they have revoked for each year, but it's not very clear how often they update that. Sure. I think that what's what ends up happening with these cases is that Oklahoma requires that doctor to be overseeing the esthetician who's working under her. And if that doctor doesn't oversee the esthetician, it's the doctor who gets punished, not the esthetician. And the esthetician who went about her day saying, oh, she lets me do this and that. and Oh, I'm happy to do it. They don't usually get punished in any way. They're treated, oh, this wasn't, the doctor was at fault. They didn't manage you. It's not really your fault. And what I've found is that's the case with nurses as well. So if an RN does something that harms a patient or whatever, it's the doctor who's managing the RN who's blamed. And then the doctor's malpractice that gets that covers that. And so typically when the case is that there's one of an esthetician or an RN who opens their own spa, practices on their own, has no medical director, there's usually no malpractice because no malpractice would cover that because that's not legal. So there's when there's somebody who doesn't have any insurance and isn't really licensed to practice medicine, first of all, that's 
a felony, right? And but usually that there's not a lot of enforcement there, which is something that I'm hoping with educating the public that will change that. But when there is a medical director, right? So the RM, I have my medical director. I was doing everything totally legally, which is what Kay Sanders was saying, right? But through her lawyer, I had one. Usually it's the medical director who gets sanctioned. They lose their license, they get warned or whatever it is, and it's their malpractice. I, I interviewed this patient on a previous episode who had a lot of scarring from a procedure who the, the person who performed that was a non-medical, like completely non-medical, no license whatsoever. Not only did they not have a license or a medical director, they didn't have any insurance. And so there was no recourse for this girl who got scarred. She... There's no lawsuit. The lawyers wouldn't take her case. They're like, there's no money to be had. And so you're completely out of luck <laughs> if that's the case. So that's really why I've, I've tried, I've harped on this, but always ask who the medical director is, look them up, always ask what the license is of the person they're seeing and look them up and make sure that they're actually doing this legally. If not, don't go, just don't go. Because if they're cutting one corner, they're probably cutting other corners. Kay Sanders was importing fake or importing illegal products into the U.S. They could be cutting a lot of other corners with sterility and other products. And so anyway, yeah, I really appreciate the investigation that you did. I think the article was excellent. And for anybody who's interested, we'll have a link to the article in our show notes. And the journal is The Frontier in Oklahoma. Jazz, is there anything else you'd like to leave our audience with? No, just thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me. Yeah, no. keep up the excellent work. All right, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. If you've learned something and like what we're doing, please tell your friends and give us a five-star rating in your podcast app. If you have a question or a crazy story of your own you'd like to share, please send an email or voice recording to info at drkatede.com. That's D-R-K-A-T-E-D-E-E.com or reach us through the website medspamayhem.com. And read the book. Medspa Mayhem is available everywhere books are sold. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being with me today. It's been fun and interesting to hear some of your stories. Please reach out if you have something to share about your experience with the aesthetics industry, good or bad, whether you've worked in it or have had treatments in a med spa. I'd love to hear from you. This has been Med Spa Mayhem with Dr. Kate D. We are so grateful you're listening, and we hope you've learned at least one fun or possibly disturbing fact today. Don't forget to hit subscribe on your podcast app and leave us a five-star review. And read the book. Med Spa Mayhem is available everywhere books are sold. Links and more can be found in the show notes and on medspamayhem.com. Medspa Mayhem.